Good morning, good evening, good whatever time you're watching this at. Welcome to yet another Pipe Dream speedrun. This speedrun is a special hacks edition. Once a quarter here at Pipe Dream, we do a day long hacking session where we create workflows or add new features or any kind of crazy ideas that we want to build in a dedicated 24 hours. And I'm excited to actually incorporate a speedrun into my hacks project. So to give you some background, whenever you make a topic in our forum, let's pull up an example here. You're going to see someone ask about a specific app integration. For example, the latest post here is asking about Google Sheets. Now, it would be really, really nice if we could reference these topics within our marketplace. So by marketplace, I mean under pipedream.com slash apps slash the name of the app. And at the very bottom, you can see my little proof of concept here where there's community posts listed at the very bottom that are linked from that forum I just showed you. And here is one example down below. Now, I've spent a lot of time creating a workflow that will actually do the work of associating the post with the app uh, in a really complicated workflow that uses um, special retrieving of the catalog from our database and also detecting the likelihood that the text includes an app name thanks to this library called NLTK for language processing. And then it will try to create a score and update our GitHub with a special code that will tell us the associated names with that particular post. Now it sounds complicated, but I'm going to show you exactly what this looks like. At the very, very end, you can see down here, this is a new association that we made from the content about a Notion post. And then we could see down here, it found Notion and it, yeah, it found Notion, great. So it's an exact match to the score is 100 out of, out of one to zero to, zero to 100. So now we have this association between the Notion and the post the Notion app and the post. There's a, cute, there's a tiny bug there. You can see that there's a uh, colon in the first app, but we can fix that later. The next problem that we're, we're facing is that this is a real time, whenever a brand new post is added to our community forum, that's what triggers this workflow. But I wanna go back in time and go through all of the posts under the help request section in the forum. There's, there's hundreds of posts here. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to be able to create a custom source. So that's what we're going to do in this work, this speed run. It's going to be a bit longer than a speed run. It's more like a long run, honestly. We're going to create a source that will iterate over these discourse topics. And then it will actually use the same workflow that I created before. I'll show you very quickly uh, under, let's see here. I'm lost again. Here we go. Under the hacks or app marketplace enrichment workflow here, this accepts one topic at a time. So I made another, once I, I've made another workflow here that will actually show us how to use the discourse API to do this. So the format is the category is help and accepts a JSON kind of suffix here. And then we can change the pages to see which page of topics we're on to paginate through. So here we're on page 21, or that's the next topics URL, and here's all of the data that we care about. Awesome. So let's go ahead and take this concept and move it into a source. So I'm going to quickly just uh, copy this here, just so we have it for later, and return to our Gitpod component and development environment. And I've gone ahead and I've authenticated my PD org with this particular uh, Gitpod instance. And I'm just going to go into my own personal area, let's say, I'm going to first make a new branch because, uh, you know, this isn't going to be a public source, it's going to be a custom source. So let's call it uh, the Hacks uh, Marketplace, Discord Marketplace, Discourse Marketplace branch. So that way I'm not interfering with the rest of the uh, public uh, sources that are built for end users. And I'm going to go in under the uh, components directory here. And you know what, I'm just going to make a quick um, 
fake hacks directory. And this is uh, Q3 2022. And then under here, I can actually uh, go ahead and create the source using our handy CLI. So PD init source, and we'll call this a discourse scraper. That's what we're doing. We're, we're scraping discourse for topics. If we go underneath our components here, scroll all the way down. You know what? Actually, it's faster to just do it this way. We can use the code discourse scraper, discourse scraper.mjs, and that will open up the code in our Visual Studio mockup here. Now, I want to go ahead and I want to just copy and paste the code that I just showed you from our, our sample workflow, which will use uh, the discourse API to request a specific page. Now you can see we're importing Axios here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to import the Axios from our uh, Pipedream platform. Gives us some, a little bit more um, context if there's an error. It's kind of nice for that. And then the first thing you'll notice here is the first argument is a dollar sign. We don't have dollar signs in sources. It's just the keyword this that passes the context to this Axios instance. And then under the props, I also want to define a discourse. That's why it says this dot discourse. So it's expecting a discourse prop. I'll just create one here. That is a type of app. And the name of the app is discourse. It is a discourse app. Cool. So now when we deploy this source, it's going to prompt us for the discourse uh-oh, looks like uh, Gitpod is uh, having some issues right now. I'm just going to uh, reload the window and hopefully, I actually copied my code here just in case. Uh, wow, we're down. I'm gonna pause the video recording. All right, now we're back up. The internet was down for a bit and uh, luckily the code was not lost and we can continue. So I was what I was talking about was We've added a discourse prop, and now we've actually going to modify this request so that we are going to paginate over the results. So first things first, I need to add a new prop that will track the last time we've ran this source. So if you look at our component documentation under the component API reference in our docs, you can see that there's this special service prop type and it's a, there's a DB. So we can actually use a database within a source to track things like the last page used or the last record processed, which is really nice for paginating over records from an API. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this prop and I'm going to call it DB, which is not very creative, but that's what it is. It's a database. And I need to specify a, a type and I can use it just like a data store where you can say get a key by its name or set a key value pair. So I'm going to go return back to discourse here. I've created this DB and I'm going to specify the page right at the top right here. We'll say the page is this.db.get uh, page. And if it's not available, then we'll set it to zero because that means the first page in computer speak. So now that we've defined a page variable, we can go ahead and replace this static page with the page stored from our database. All right, so after this request is made, it should return a bunch of data. And I'm just gonna create a quick little variable here called data. And the data looks like, going back to our sample scraping test here, we can see there's this topic list. And under topic list, there are the topics. So I'm going to go ahead and it might be even easier to just copy this path just to start, paste it in here. And now we can see like, yes, the beginning steps doesn't exist in the source context. So I can delete that, I can delete the return value. But the data that we just retrieved from, from the API, this Axios call, this should be available for us to iterate over. So, oh, probably would help to close out the Axios call. 
<laughs> don't forget to do that. So for each of these topics that we're getting from discourse, we want to iterate over them, right? So for topic, cons, we'll get to, to specify this new variable. Topic of topics, we'll go through here and we will emit a new event from the source to any workflow subscribing to this source. And I'm going to just emit uh, the topic and spread it. Now, the important thing to know about emitting IDs or emitting records is that you need to include an ID so we can dedupe. If you've ever scraped an API before, you know deduping is kind of a pain, but with Pipedream, it's actually kind of built in, which is really nice. But we have to make sure that we give an actual ID. So let's go back to our example here. And you can see there's an ID right underneath the first topic. Perfect. That's what we need. So going back to the component API reference, I'm going to show you the dedupe strategies. Now here are three different strategies, strategies to choose from to tell Pipedream how to dedupe new records to make sure you're not emitting twice for the same record. I'm going to choose greatest in this case, but unique is another, another option. Um, but the, the gotcha with unique is that we only store the past 100 IDs and there's hundreds of topics in our Discord at the moment, just discourse at the moment. So greatest is going to be our, our last, our, our, best, our best bet because we're gonna go in order. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to set the dedupe strategy to greatest. And get rid of that space, we don't need that. Let me just double check, I'm, I'm doing this right here. There should be a dedupe property. I'm just gonna search for dedupe in our documentation here. Yes, so dedupe is a property right on the component itself. Perfect, okay. So what we can do now is actually test this guy out. Um, the easiest way to test out a, oh, I'm sorry, one last thing. We need to change the summary. The summary is not very helpful if it says hello world. The summary is what appears in the workflow inspector as well as in the logs of the source. So it's kind of helpful to put in just like a really simple blurb that's unique to that topic or the record that you're iterating over. So I'm going to use the topic, what's, what's available? Topic title? Yeah, topic title. That should be nice and short. So we'll copy this path real quick. But we know it's just topic.title. And the TS stands for timestamp, which is the current date, that's fine. Now, how do we get this from code onto our Pipedream account? Well, we have this nice little PD dev for sources, and I'm going to specify my Pipedream org API keys, and I'm just gonna go ahead and deploy this scraper. Now, hopefully, knock on wood, I didn't make any major mistakes here, and it's able to create a component. I messed up. 400 error. Name not supported for prop discourse. So I just connected the uh, the app incorrectly. All right. Long story short, I found the problem. The name isn't discourse. The app itself is discourse. Let's try that again. The nice thing about PDDev is it will automatically attempt to redeploy it whenever there's a code change in the code. You don't have to like command C and then retype the command or refresh it, it automatically will refresh on code changes. And right, right now it's asking me to configure the prop and I've already have a connected account on Discourse called Pipedream Community. So I'm just gonna select that. And it should, oops, I need to be in my terminal, to press enter. And now it should deploy to our account, which I'll show you once it's done. And the name should just be Discourse Scraper as we defined up here in the prop itself. Successfully updated, great. So I'm going to head back to my Pipedream account here, head to my sources, and there's a brand new Discourse Scraper. Cool. So I'm going to trigger this run function. If we defined a run func function up here. I'm going to trigger it by clicking the Run Now button. Now this will 
create this will call that function and then hopefully we'll be storing these database entries to the service database etc it's not emitting anything that is odd so i think what i did wrong was i forgot to put the id in the summary let's try that again and I'm going to put another console log here just to make this a little bit more clear. So we're going to say emitting a single topic and I'm going to pass in the topic just to make sure the data looks good. And then hopefully updating, you can see down here in the terminal. And then when it's done, the component will be refreshed and we hit rerun again. It's updated. Go back to our component here. Click run now. Aha, that was the issue. So with deduping, it's not inferred from the record. The ID is not inferred from the record. The ID needs to pass, be passed to the summary, which is a second argument in that emit call. And we can see this big old list of events coming through. Awesome, cool. So how do, how do we connect this to our workflow? Well, lucky us, we just go into our original workflow here. Where is it? Under workflows. And then we can go under our hacks enrichment discord. And then we can just attach the workflow using the multi trigger options. We just add a new trigger and then use one of our existing sources. And that's the discourse scraper I just made and select an event and test the whole thing if you want to. Now, the other thing I wanted to bring up was we don't want to sit here and click run now for every single page. What we want to do is we want to actually have it go on a, on a timer, right? Like on a polling timer. So under here, I'm gonna show you another service called the poll. Not a service, a timer prop interface. It's a timer. All right, so we're gonna do this timer thing and we're going to add it to our scraper. This is a brand new prop called a timer. And by default, the cron is once per day. And we'll refresh our configuration here. Updated, cool. So now the configuration includes a timer, which we can change right here. We could say every hour, and it will go ahead and attempt to run through this code every hour and look for new topics and go back through the pages until it reaches the very end. If there's no more pages left, then we should actually exit out the, uh, the source. But this is just a general concept to show you how you can create a scraping source that will automatically rerun every X number of seconds or hours, whatever. And then it'll emit unique records whenever they're seen, thanks to the built-in deduping strategies. And before I forget, just because this will make the whole pagination functional, we need to make sure that we use db.set after we've emitted all the records from this current page. So we're going to pass the key page and then we're going to take the current page and just increment it. So the next run, we actually go to the next page rather than uh, sit on page zero for eternity. So longer, longer video, I know, but this is a hacks video and it's going to be rough. It's going to be a little bit hacky, but we're going to actually release this and make it part of production in a single day, which is pretty exciting. So thanks for following along. I hopefully that you, you saw a new way to use Pipedream using sources. It's a more advanced topic, which we're gonna cover in university, but it's really neat and it allows you to create really dynamic workflows that aren't dependent on a real time or a future event. You can go back in time and paginate over old records. As always, have a great day.